To me, Irish people are the funniest in the world. They just are. Oh, this looks amazing. I just love any food that comes with its own home. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. Anything else? Some greens. What do you think I am? A juggler? <laughs> Stunning. Inspirational. Would you look at the brush strokes on that? I think the reason I see comedy in everything is because I was surrounded by it growing up. That's good. You wouldn't know we're 105. You're 105. Between us. <laughs> Do you know what? There's only one word for that. Absolutely cracker. Hi. How are you? In Ireland, one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is to describe them as a character. If you find me pearls, give them to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Because as every writer knows, it's the characters you remember long after you've forgotten the story. Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lala Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Warrington Irish Club, a friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Redditch, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Hello to you all and a very warm welcome to the show. There was an Irish heritage and cultural event arranged at St George's Hall in Bradford. This was a huge success which was arranged by Conor McMahon. We'll be joining them later in the show. But first we're off to St Patrick's Day Parade in Manchester. It was great to see the parade so well supported with floats, walking groups, bands and some very special guests. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to the Lord. But we'll also pray. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today uh, with you all. As the Lord Mayor of Manchester, my consort's here as well, um, to celebrate the annual of St. Patrick's uh, Day Parade. Over the years, the Irish community has contributed so much to this city in, a Man in, a Ma in Manchester in various ways. We are proud of the contribution they make to our life and in, we look forward to seeing their future contributions. I'm absolutely also delighted to see that the Ukraine are being invited um, to, the to this uh, community walk today. I absolutely hope you all have a fantastic day and I'm so pleased that the sun's out because I was absolutely bricking it yesterday, if I'm honest, thinking it was going to be raining. 
So thank you so much and I hope you have a really fantastic day. This is what it's all about. This reminds me of going out to the parade in, uh, in Dublin. And you have memories all your life of uh, Irish parades. So, but thanks very much to Brian and Michael and all the team here at the Irish Centre for putting on the parade. Big, big hand for all the volunteers who do it. You don't, all the volunteers behind the scenes put this parade together. And the good news is, I booked you in in Albert Square in two years so that we can all go back to Albert Square when we go into town and we'll have a fantastic knees up the best Irish festival and parade that we've ever had. Have a brilliant day everyone, thank you. It's an exceptional job you've done today to organise the parade and I really bowled over by the crowd here as I pulled up. Yeah. Um, I want to pay tribute to the Irish community here in Manchester for supporting the events that take place here at the Irish Centre and for contributing to this magnificent celebration of Irish culture, heritage and community. Gurav Mila Morrigan. diaspora well what can you say it is unique and I'm not biased in saying that so when we look at how far our Irish connections extend I feel we have an awful lot to be proud of the government of Ireland itself recognizes that importance and the achievements of the diaspora particularly here in Manchester so we are here and it's why we opened the consulate to build long-term sustainable relationships with the diaspora community and one of the ways that we do that and Martin will know this is through the emigrant support program Last year alone, the Irish government supported organisations with £5.6 million in funding that was granted to over 100 organisations across the Irish community here. And with the primary focus still being on supporting the most vulnerable in Irish society. So 2023, if we look forward and we mark this year, we have three major anniversaries. The centenary of Ireland joining the League of Nations was a huge important part for us as a very small fledgling country. It's also the 50th anniversary of our accession to the EU, which is the EEC, and the 25th anniversary of a very, very important milestone, the Good Friday Agreement. So as you, I'm sure I won't bore you now but with the details, but we have now entered a new phase of our relationship between the EU and the UK and with the Windsor Agreement. And just to let you know that Ireland fully supports that as we go into a new era. here at St Chad's Church and Cheatham Hill Road. Uh, it's always well supported by the Irish community and we notice that you've got St Patrick there on your shoulder behind you. <laughs> the tenth year now that he's been out. Ten, uh, Ten years yeah. running he's been out. Hold on to your hat Lord Mayor. <laughs> it's also wonderful to come today together to celebrate our national day and all that it means to be Irish. The success of gatherings like today is a testament to you and the vibrant community that's here in Manchester and to the warmth felt towards the Irish community all across Britain. There's a great crowd of you over from yes. Leeds from today. Oh, mighty, yeah.
A lovely day for you all. Good Absolutely, to see you too. Great. Are you enjoying it? Absolutely brilliant, yeah, it's great. You've, you've had a big turnout from Irish Community Care. We're all out, we're all out. We're having fun that we're getting a bit of money in here. But... Yeah, well, look at well done, well done. Brilliant. I'll go and catch some up, but I'll love to see you by. Okay, cheers, sir. Okay, bye. Are you enjoying the day? Yeah, great day. Come on, Russ Common. For the diaspora, you've made your homes here. St. Patrick's Day is an important chance to connect with our Irish identities and with other members of the global Irish family and with Ireland itself, don't forget. And we celebrate all the things that make Ireland a home for us. So no matter how long you've been away, you're always Irish, no matter where you are in the world. Here, 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 here. I just want to wish you all a very, very happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks a million. Well done to everyone who came along to support all the parades right around the country. It was a great celebration for us all and well done. Now we're going to take a little break and when we come back we'll be joining the Irish Heritage Group in Bradford.
To me, Irish people are the funniest in the world. They just are. Oh, this looks amazing. I just love anything that comes with its own home. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. I mean, that's some greens. What do you think I am? A juggler? <laughs> Stunning. Inspirational. Would you look at the brush strokes on that? I think the reason I see comedy in everything is because I was surrounded by it growing up. That's good. You wouldn't know we're 105. You're 105. Between <laughs> us. Do you know what? There's only one word for that. Absolutely cracker. Hi, how are you? In Ireland, one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is to describe them as a character. If you find me pearls, give them to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Sloco. Come in, I'm coming. You couldn't run the leg for yourself. Because as every writer knows, it's the characters you remember long after you've forgotten the story. Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now, there was an Irish heritage and cultural event arranged at St. George's Hall in Bradford. This was a huge event with some fantastic music, which was arranged by Conor McMahon. Organising this event has been um, very rewarding and it's really great to see that we are now at the stage where we're at the venue and we've got so many tickets sold. Um, it's had its ups and downs, it's been, it's been stressful as you can imagine. This is a very busy time of year for musicians, um, uh, so it's been uh, I'm very, very glad, very happy that I've been able to source so many musicians the day before St Patrick's Day. As a director of the Bradford Irish Society, our main kind of aim is to promote Irish culture in the city of Bradford. Um, we kind of, um, just before the pandemic hit, we, we had this kind of a vision to kind of bolster it and put more events on, and obviously the pandemic really kind of uh, froze us in our footsteps. Um, so this is really the kind of biggest event that we've put on um, at the Bradford Irish Society um, for many, many years. So it's really great to have this space to do so. The Bradford Irish Society sort of grew out of 
a bad thing happening for us. So we, we used to have a club. Um, unfortunately, it were really it were a, not much more than a working men's club, and as we know, that's a model that didn't work very well. And that closed down a long time ago now, 20 years perhaps ago. Um, it's our ambition to have somewhere permanent to promote Irish culture and heritage. But in the meantime, um, we think it's important to just do as many activities and bring as many people together as we can. We just started doing things before COVID came along. We just established uh, a music night, but that's been re-established. So we, we do two of them a, a month now in a pub called Jacob's Well across the way that more and more people are coming to uh, and enjoying. What's the news? What's the news? Oh, me boys shall malear With your long-barrelled guns from the sea Say what winds from the south Blows your messenger here With this hymn of the dawn for the free Goodly news, goodly news Do I bring you a fourth Goodly news shall you Man. For the boys march at dawn from the south to the north, led by Kelly, the boy from Killan. Well, we're on the eve of St. Patrick's Day tonight, and there were these huge St. Patrick's Day events here in Victorian times where, you know, four and a half thousand people, choirs of 500 or a thousand singing Irish music and uh, a great sense of uh, identity for the Irish people in Bradford here was celebrated in this venue. So we really want to um, remember that and, and dig down and understand that important Irish history here in Bradford that is a little bit forgotten, I think. I think we don't necessarily fully celebrate that Irish history, which is an important part of Bradford's story. We found a playbill during the renovation of the building underneath the floor from 1871 that showed an evening of entertainment for Irish audiences and we found out that in 1851 the largest community of Irish people in the whole of Yorkshire was in Bradford and this is a window, a little bit of a window into their lives because it's an evening of entertainment in this playbill which includes singing Irish songs, singing Dublin Bay, Kate Keane, uh, uh, Come Back to Erin and also comic characters, Irish characters like Judy O'Flaherty, a fine Tipperary woman full of the wonders of England, that barbarous nation. What can we say about the Irish population in Bradford uh, during the 19th century? So Bradford was, of course, you'll probably all know, an industrial boom town in this period. However, it was the period between 1841 and 1851 when Irish Catholics came to the town in large numbers, mostly as a result, of course, of the devastation wrought by the famine. My name is Aidan Enright. It's, it's, a, it's a name that comes from uh, the southwest of Ireland in County Kerry, uh, parts of County Kerry and parts of County Limerick. So my dad was from, from, from that part of the country in County Kerry. And he moved up to Roscommon as a young man uh, when he was about 15 or 16 uh, to help his grand aunt out on her farm in County Roscommon and she ended up uh, giving him the farm. Um, and he married his next door neighbour, a lady called Maureen Martha, and she obviously became Maureen Enright. And uh, they had nine children and I am the youngest of, uh, of those, those nine children. So in 1851, there was about 9,500 Irish people living here in Bradford, um, and it was actually the largest Irish community of any Yorkshire town at the time. From, from that period on, you know, the Irish were, were a big part of the community here in Bradford, um, right up to, I guess, probably the middle part of, well, up to the 1980s, really, I guess. There was, a, there was an Irish scene, if you like, here in Bradford. The Irish were, yeah, they were involved in the construction of, you know, some of the main buildings in Bradford, like City Hall and St George's Hall. You know, they would have been, you know, part of the labouring class, if you like. Um, and, you know, they lived in the city centre in places like Goyteside and, and Black Abbey and White Abbey. 
you know, in sort of very run-down, cramped living conditions. So, you know, they were very solidly working class, lived in sort of very cramped living conditions. You know, they had a tough time of it. They worked on a lot of the sort of the difficult jobs, like labouring jobs and then, you know, building these big buildings here in Bradford. You know, Bradford was a boom town in, in the middle part of the 19th century. So the Irish were a big, big part of that. Um, there used to be a St. Patrick's Day Parade here in Bradford. Um, there used to be an Irish club here in Bradford. Um, so basically, you know, what we're trying to do here, part of what we're trying to do here tonight is, is sort of revive that Irish scene in Bradford because um, there's still a lot of people here living in the city of Irish heritage um, and immigrants like myself. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to sort of um, revive that history and revive the sort of Irish scene here in Bradford. Step it out, Mary, you might find out. Step it out, Mary, if you can. Step it out, Mary, you might find out. Show your legs to the country, man. Step it out, Mary, you might find out. Step it out, Mary, if you can. Step it out, Mary, you might find out. Show your legs to the country, man. So, I'm here, aren't I? I'm uh, with, with my exotic foreign name. My dad was Hungarian. In my Yorkshire accent, I was brought up in Sheffield, but my mum was from Dublin. So, um, and most of our family that uh, are still alive uh, live in either in Dublin or in uh, Tipperary, South Tipperary. We've already started looking for funding for next year. If today goes well, I don't think we'll just be repeating it. If today goes well, I think we'll be looking at doing something maybe a little bit more ambitious. I play the Irish illin pipes. Uh, illin is Irish for elbow because you use your elbow to pump the bellows, which then fills the bag under your other arm with air. So they're, uh, they're, they're quite different from the kind of traditional Scottish bagpipes. Um, they've got probably a, a, a mellower, um, possibly sweeter sound uh, without being biased. Um, but um, yeah, so I've been playing them for the past 10 years. I'd just like to thank everyone who made tonight possible, um, namely Penny Green, who's Heritage Officer at St George's Hall, um, everyone at the Bradford Irish Society, and Charles Heslett from BBC Radio Leeds, who got us a spot on there uh, this afternoon. The photos are from uh, a local man called Peter Fawcett. He took the photos um, and he's been kind of in the Irish scene in West Yorkshire for decades and he's got an amazing collection of old photographs. Thank you very much, thank you. What a great night for the Irish in Bradford and well done to Conor McMahon for putting in so much work in arranging that event. And a big thank you to our own Chris Hazel who went along to capture the atmosphere. We hope you've enjoyed the show this week. We'll be back next Thursday night with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. And just before us, Henry McGlade is here with his show from County Mayo at 7 o'clock. Until then, look after yourselves and we'll see you next week. Fill your heart with Ireland.
Discover more at Ireland.com.